Greetings, learners. Uh, this is Mashia Howe from Obi Tibet College, Rustenburg Campus. We are going to touch on New Venture Creation Level 2. Now, on the New Venture Creation Level 2, I want us to touch on topic number 3. Now, our topic number 3, we can also call it a module from our textbooks. Now, the module number three is about determining the financial requirements for a new venture. Now, we are talking about the financial side of a new business. Now, the unit, uh, the learning outcome, we are at the end of this module. You should be able to, number one, explain the concept of budgeting, which is applicable to a new venture. You need to understand what is it that we are talking about when you are talking about a budget or budgeting. Number two, you should be able to determine the expenditure of a business, meaning that you need to know the different types of expenses or costs that we have. Now you should be able to differentiate those. And the last one, we should be able to compile the cash flow budget. Now, number one, we need to explain when we are talking about a budget, what are we talking about? Budget is a generic word that we use every way, but we need to understand when we are talking a budget, what are we talking about? Now, budget is a financial plan which shows the future income or expenses for a certain period. Now, when you are saying you are making a budget, we are saying you are planning ahead. That is the a financial, financial plan showing the future income and expenses for a certain period. Now, normally we would uh, uh, do our budget on month, monthly basis or we, or we can do the budget on quarterly basis. It's up to you. But the business usually we do it on monthly basis or quarterly basis. Now, another terminology is we are saying a budget is a sum of money allocated for a particular purpose. It's a money that is allocated for a particular purpose with a summary of the intended expenditures along. It means now, when you are expecting money, for an example, you are expecting 1,500, you need to plan ahead. What is it that you are going to use that 1,500? 504. Now, that is what we are calling a budget. Now, from there, we are having different methods of managing or controlling that budget. And number one, you need to set the budget standard. How much are you willing to spend or how much are we expecting as a business? Number two, you measure the performance. It means now, after setting up the summary of all the expenses, you need to check if are you going to have money at the end. How much are you spending on what expense? Now you need to evaluate to check you measure. That is, what, that is why we are saying we measure the performance. Number three, we identify the remedial action. It means now you have a chance to check, okay, I'm spending much on this. I can change it from here to somewhere else. And lastly, you take the corrective action. Now we are having different types of budgets, which is the sales budget. Number two, the operating expense budget. And lastly, the cash flow budget. Today, we are only going to concentrate on the cash flow budget. Okay, uh, after completing your budget, you should have answers to the following question. Number one, what profit can be expected because we are the business? Number two, how many sales can be achieved? Number three, what will the fixed and variable expenses be at each level? Now, first of all, it means you need to understand the different uh, types of expenses. Now, let us go to the different types of expenses within a new venture, within a business. Number one, we have the fixed cost. Two, we have variable cost. We have startup cost. We also have the total cost. Now, number one, we need to go to the fixed cost. Now, this cost, they do not change. Those are the expenses that remain the same month after month. That is why we are saying they are fixed. Now, an example of the fixed cost, we are talking about rent. 
We are talking about interest on repayment. We are talking about the salaries. Why? Because if you have made an agreement with the landlord that you are paying 2000 for your rent, for the business rent, whether you have made a profit or not, you still had to maintain the agreement that we made. That is to pay that rent, whether the business has made a profit or not. That is why we are saying it's fixed. Number two, variable costs. Now, these costs involve the running as well as operating your business. Now, we are saying under the variable costs, those expenses, they fluctuate. It means uh, uh, we pay according to consumption. For an example, we have wages. As an example of the variable costs, we have water and electricity. We have advertising costs and stationery. Now, going back to wages, why are we saying wages is a variable cost or variable expense? Now, remember, wages is the money that we pay to our employees for performing a certain duty. Now, we can pay those employees on hourly basis. We can pay them on daily basis or on weekly basis. That is why we are saying it's a wage. You pay someone because he did this job that we agreed with, and that's that. Number three, we have startup costs. Now, when we are talking about the startup costs, we are talking about the cost of money that is required when you start a business the expenses that you need to cover when you start the business. Now it falls under the start-up cost. For an example, we are talking about paying a license. For an example, under initial payment for license. Example, if we want to open a restaurant. In order for that restaurant to operate, we need a license. So you need to pay that license before you run the business. A telephone connection within the organization, water connection within the organization. Now those, uh, you need to buy furniture to start that business. Now that it falls under the startup cost. Lastly, we have what you call the total costs. Now when you're talking about the total cost, we are saying those are all the costs that are involved in starting a business, which is the startup cost, running the business. It can be a variable cost or the fixed cost or selling of goods for the business. All in all, I'm saying the total cost is the combination of all the expenses, like the fixed cost, variable cost, as well as the startup cost. Now it's the total cost that we have within the organization. Now we are done with our different types of costs that we have. Cost or expenses, it is still the same. Now we are going to move on to the cash flow budget. Now, to start with, cash flow, what comes to your mind? Cash flow. Now, when we are talking about the cash flow, we are talking about the inflow and the outflow of cash within the organization. We receive money, we make payments, which means we are talking about the income, we are also talking about the expense. Now, the cash flow budget. Remember, budget is an estimation, right? Now, the cash flow budget. A cash flow budget is an estimation of all the cash receipts, which is the income, and of all the expenses that are expected to occur during a certain period of time. Now, what are we saying? We are saying the cash flow budget, it only deals with the income and the expenses. We are not talking assets, we are not talking liabilities. We are only talking about the income and the expenses. Now, again, we said, going back to the cash flow, we said the inflow of money, that is the income. The outflow of money, what is it? It's an expense, are we fine? Now, we are making an estimation. Normally, when the business made an estimation, we said we are making estimations on monthly basis or on quarterly basis. It depends on your business. Now, let us go through the structure. I'm going to give you the structure to see how we do it. Now, that is the cash flow budget. You need to name the business, the name of the business there. The cash flow budget of Kate's Boutique, for an example here. 
Uh, you can also go to page 205, which is the CLS textbook. You can just go there and see the structure of the cash flow budget. Now I'm going to explain each step so that we can be on the same page. Now, uh, we are concentrating on the left side of that table. The right side is just an explanation of what is happening there. Number one, the bank balance at the beginning of the month. Normally, the bank balance is given. Uh, under the bank balance, guys, we have the favorable bank balance or the unfavorable bank balance. When we are talking about the favorable bank balance, it means you have money in the bank. When we are talking about the unfavorable, which is the, the negative, it means you owe money in the bank. You used more than what you are supposed to use or used more than what you have. Now, credit sales. Credit sales, we only record money under credit sales if you are given the instructions to do that. Number three, the cash sales. Now, the cash sales normally is given on the case study. Uh, it should be the estimated income. Normally, it's given uh, other income. Other income, let's, let's go back to case boutique and let us stick to case boutique. Now, case boutique, a boutique is a, is a shop that sells clothing, different kinds of clothing, luxurious clothing. Now, other income under case boutique, we'll talk about Kate selling and I need two other boutiques because she bought another one. So that money that she receives from selling the iron or the steamer, besides selling the clothes, is going to fall under other income. Now, the total cash available. We need to add number one, which is the bank balance at the beginning. We add credit sales, we add cash sales, and other income, we get this, which we call the total income. I take that all of us, we are fine with it. I'm saying bank balance at the beginning of the month, normally it's given. Credit sales, credit sales, you only enter the amount if you are given an instruction to do that. If there is no instruction about the credit sales, you leave them because maybe Kate does not sell anything on credit. So you leave it if you, there's no instruction related to the credit sales. Number three, the cash sales. People, I'm saying the cash sales, it is the same as the estimated income. It is given. If it's not given, you'll be given on the case study that you know you are going to sell this amount of money. Now it is going to fall under cash sales. Now other income. Other income I'm saying besides selling clothes you can earn an income within that organization now you are going to write it other under other income now that is the total cash available we add that is the inflow of money we have determined the inflow of money within the organization then let us go to the outflow of money it starts with monthly expenses remember we talked about the total costs i get guys now under the monthly expenses we are talking about the total expenses or we add the average uh, 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 expenses now what am i saying we are saying at the end of the month we know that the business needs to pay rent the business needs to pay suppliers or whatever now those regular expenses that we make that is why we are we are we call them the monthly expenses then we have the cash purchases normally they are called the estimated purchases from the textbook normally they are given now under other payments that is number eight people other payments you are talking about the expenses that do not Okay, on regularly or on monthly basis. For an example, you decide to buy a new iron, maybe case boutique. You decide to buy a new iron. Now, because we are not buying irons on monthly basis, we are going to uh, uh, put it under other payments. Now, the total cash payments, which is number nine, we are going to add. Monthly expenses, cash purchases, and other payments. That is how we get our total payments. Lastly, bank balance at the end of the month. 
people, it means now we want to check if you are going to have enough money at the end of the month. Now we are going to take total cash available, which is the money that we received, minus the total cash payment, which are our expenses. Now we get the bank balance at the end of the month. So guys, usually I would, uh, uh, um, I, okay. Bank balance at the end of the month. I'm saying we take the total cash available, which is the income, minus the total cash payments, which are the expenses. Now we get the bank balance at the end of the month. Guys, on our cash flow budget, if you are doing it on quarterly basis, it means what you have at the end of the month will be the opening for the next month. Again, we talked about the favorable bank balance as well as the unfavorable bank balance. We said when you are talking about the favorable bank balance, it means you have money in the bank. It means the total cash that you received is 50,000 and the total payments is 40,000. It means at the end of the month, you'll be remaining with how much? With 10,000. That is a favorable bank balance because you received 50,000, you made payments of 40,000. Now you are remaining with how much? 10,000. Now that 10,000 that we have at the end of May will be the opening for June. Okay, we are going to do the activity together. I took the case boutique a example from 2019 March previous question paper. Now I want us to go through that so that you can understand what I'm saying. I want to show you exactly what I'm talking about when I've been talking about the ones, the tooth and the threads. Now let us go to the cash flow budget here. We are still talking about the cash flow budget of Case Boutique because we've been talking about it all along. Now what I'm saying is that the bank balance at the beginning of the month plus cash sales plus credit sales plus other income. Now you'll see that there is a question mark here. Now it means we need to calculate how much do we have. Now we add all this amount. 46,000 plus 23,000 plus 8,000 plus 2,000. Now we are going to get 79 thousand that is the total income this one from there we are talking about the expenses monthly expenses which is seven thousand two hundred we add with eighteen thousand plus three thousand now it means we only add these three so that we can get the total payments now the question mark again here now our question mark, uh, our total payments will be how much? It will be 28,200. Now we want to know the bank balance at the end of the month. How much do we have at the end of the month? Of which month? September. Now we are going to go there. The total income minus the total expenses. Now we are saying 79,000 minus 28,200. Now we have here, we are having 50,800. Now this 50,800, it's a favorable bank balance. Why are we saying that? Because our income is more than the expenses. That is why we are having this 50,000. And guys, again, we said, the bank balance at the end of September, it should be the opening balance for which month? For October. So we take this 50,800 to the bank balance at the beginning of October, which is how much? 50,800. So this is how we do our cash flow budget. Okay, to summarize today's lesson, we said we talked about determining the financial requirements for a new venture. I take that all of us, we understand the term budget. Remember we said what is a budget? A budget is a financial plan. It's an estimated financial plan for future income and expenses. We talked about different methods that we can use to control our budget. We talked about different types of 
expenses like the fixed cost or the fixed expense, which are those expenses that remains the same. We talked about different kinds of costs, variable costs. We talked uh, total costs. We also talked about the difference between the income and the expenses. We talked about the cash flow budget. I take that all of us, we understand. If you don't understand, you can contact the college social platform. They will be able to help. I'll also be there to help you. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, stay home, wash your hands and stay safe. Thank you.